previously. Ugh, get open! Scallops! Some junior home cooks ah. came out of their shell. Great dish, really tasty. I've got a feeling you're going to be around a long time. But for Chad and Annabelle... Both of you, I'm sorry. ...it was the end of their MasterChef Junior dreams. Hi, guys, we love you! Tonight, <laughs> the competition blasts off. Well, that is awesome. The top 20 junior home cooks face an out-of-this-world challenge. Make the very best cheese dish in this entire universe. Which home cook will rock it to the top? Absolutely perfectly done. Mm, delicious. Well Thank done. You. And whose journey will come to an end? What have you put in there? I forgot to season it. <laughs> Seven, Just six, like five, four, three, two, one. That one small step for man, one giant leap for MasterChef. <laughs> now, when I was your age, I wanted to be three things. A soccer player, a chef, and an astronaut. Oh, yeah. Who wants to be an astronaut when they grow up? <laughs> What if I told you I knew somebody that had actually walked in space and they lived on board the space station for 174 days? Oh, I'd wow. be surprised. Whoa. Awesome! Please welcome Tracy Dyson. Oh my gosh! She's been launched into space twice. A real live astronaut. Are you kidding me? I've always wanted to be a chef, an astronaut, and a spy. So it's amazing to see an accomplished astronaut. That's like one of the things on my bucket list. Right, I'm sure we've got some exciting questions. Kaya, please. Have you seen any aliens? Well, I lived up there with about five other guys. Do those count? <laughs> <laughs> right, next, uh, Ian, please. Um, did you ever cook in space? We were adding water to food that's already been cooked and reconstituting it. That is awesome. Let's see. <gasps> right inside this box here. Looks a little bit like this. Whoa. The portions look tiny. That's because all the water's been removed. Once you rehydrate it, it looks a little bit more like a normal portion. Wow, so no drive through takeaways. No. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. Thank you, my darling. That's amazing. You're very welcome. So, guys, there is no greater mystery than outer space. Except, of course, what's under your mystery box. Go to your culinary space station so we can find out. Yes, that's right. All right, obviously, tonight's challenge is space themed. Ooh. Corey, any guesses what's under that mystery box? A chunk of moon. <laughs> A chunk of moon. <laughs> moon. Camely, what do you think's under that mystery box? Cheese, because the moon's made out of cheese. Interesting. Right, on the count of three, lift those boxes. Do me well, box. One, two, three, blast off. Cheese! Yeah. Wow. Every real astronaut will tell you that the moon is made of cheese. <laughs> I knew it. Yummy. <laughs> what? The moon is made of cheese? <gasps> oh, my God. <gasps> this is awesome. I love cheese. You have all sorts of amazing cheeses. Gruyere, Swiss, Brie, Manchego, Smoked Gouda, and Gorgonzola. You're all going to be making a MasterChef quality cheese dish.
And along with all that cheese, you'll also have access to a limited pantry. All of you, it's time to say goodbye to the amazing Tracy, our real life astronaut. Bye, Tracy! Bye, Tracy! Take care. <laughs> Touching space. Bye bye. 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 I touched her. Good luck, you guys. Bye. 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 All right, guys. You will have just one hour to make us a MasterChef quality cheese dish that is truly out of this world. Your 60 minutes starts now. Ooh, potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. A chicken Gordon Bleu with a fettuccine ratatouille. Because back in Hong Kong, my dad will always make chicken Gordon Bleu. I would love to go to outer space, but I want to be a chef. Wow, there are so many cheeses. It sounds a very easy mystery box challenge, but it's not. It's actually quite difficult. Totally hard. You've got to have a little taste with them first. Exactly. Take away the intimidating cheese you're yep. not familiar with, and then start incorporating that across the dish in order for it to become the hero. making ricotta cookies with a blackberry sauce. Back home in Arizona, my dad introduced me to the world of baking, and I know so many recipes with ricotta, so I feel really good. This is hard to cut. Addison, yes. what are you making? I'm making a three cheese ravioli with a manchango basil pesto. So you're making fresh pasta? Yes. Wow. Have you made this before? I have. Who taught you? My mom. What do you think when you saw those bags on space food? I wanted to try them. If I was going to space, I'd need Tabasco in one pocket, salt, pepper in the other, because that food, I think, needs a little bit of help, right? Yes. Is this going to be your victory tonight, this Mr. Box challenge? It is. Right. Good luck. OK. Caitlin. Hi. What are you making with cheese? Lemon ricotta cookies with ricotta buttercream okay. and a lemon glaze. Do you bake a lot at home? Well, back home in New York, I like making cream cheese frosting for red velvet cupcakes. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. All right, good luck, Caitlin. Thank you. Halfway gone. 28 minutes remaining. Hey, Derek. Hello. Now, how amazing was it to have an astronaut? It was amazing because I love all sorts of science I am the food scientist. I look at a recipe and then I experiment. And today you can say I had smoke gun out. Wow, so what are you making? I am making a crepe. I'm using Gruyere cheese okay. with a nice brie cheese. Wow, and all of a sudden you're like blowing me away. Well, it's time to smoke gun. Do it, gun. smoke on. Oh dear. JJ, so how good is this cheese dish that you're making going to taste? It is one of my favorite dishes in the whole wide world. Tell me about it. I made a cheese enchilada. I got the sharp cheddar, and I mixed it with Gouda, because I know Gouda gives a nice, smoky flavor. It's inspired by Tex-Mex. So a lot of Mexican foods are so spicy and smoky. That's why I put it in. It's been a very interesting and a very fun process. <laughs> good luck. All right, guys, just 10 minutes left. Oh, my gosh. I knew. They've come up with some incredible dishes. Yeah. I mean, they look amazing. Very decisive yep. and very creative. This dish is going to send the judges to the moon. 60 seconds to go. God. Start plating. Let's go, guys. Finish strong. Fifth, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, two one, one, and stop! And over the last 60 minutes, we saw everything, and we tasted as you cooked along. 
Now it's time to bring forward the three dishes that we are dying to take an even closer look at. The first dish incorporated more than one cheese. And the dish is finished off with an incredible sauce. Please, step forward. Addison. Woo! Yeah, Addy! Yes! I feel so proud of my dish. It has so much cheese, and I really think it's going to taste out of this world. Right, uh, young lady, describe the dish, please. You have a three-cheese ravioli with ricotta, mozzarella, and asiago cheese, and a basil pesto. Wow. Visually, it's beautiful. It's rustic, it's charming. That looks like it's just come out of an Italian restaurant. I have a lot of Italian in my blood. Love it. Um, why pesto over the ravioli? I've made pesto my whole life. All nine years of it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. How did you combine the cheese in the center? I used an immersion blender and two eggs. Pasta's nice and thin. Mmm, wow. Addison, three cheese ravioli, um, delicious. The blend is beautiful, seasoned perfectly. You've made the most amazing raviolis, but when you sit them on top of one another, you mm -hmm. flatten them. Yeah. So next time, give your stunning raviolis a little bit more space to breathe. Okay. But listen, yeah, they're filled beautifully. And the pasta's got a bite. So, good job. Well Thank done. Thank you. Excellent. The second dish that we want to examine further is use the cheese in a different way than 99% of the other cooks out there. And that dish belongs to... Caitlin. I'm so happy that I made it in the top three. I think it's really risky to do a dessert and make something totally different. So I'm hoping that will set me apart. All right, Caitlin, these look great. The dish that you made us, tell me exactly what it is. I decided to put a little twist on macaroons. Mm -hmm. They're lemon ricotta cookies with ricotta buttercream and a lemon glaze. Wow, so like triple lemon throwdown. Yep. All right, so how old are you? I'm 11 years old. Do you think that this shows who you are as far as like being a student? Because this really is one of the best classrooms in the world, if you think about it. I kind of like to do things a little bit differently than my teacher asked me to do. And I always end up getting in trouble for it. But in the end, I'll always figure out some way to do it. You've got the foundation nailed. Really tasty. They pop with lemon but that ricotta really comes through, which is almost like a sweet cream. It's got just a beautiful dairy flavor, and that's what I'm getting from here. Anything, the sugar in the filling could be uh, incorporated a little more. It's still got a little bit of grayness yeah. to it, but tonight, you're top of the class. Great job, really proud. Thank you. Great job. The third and last dish that we'd like to take a closer look at has cheese that has been stuffed into something delicious. The dish belongs to... JJ. Woo! I'm a little disappointed that I didn't make it to the top three. I thought my smoke gun was gonna do it, but I'm happy for JJ. His enchiladas are looking amazing. All right, JJ, what did you put together? I have a cheese enchilada with a cheese crisp. I used sharp cheddar and gouda. What started your passion for cooking? My dad, when I was two, he would get me a stool out and I would be the one with the spoon stirring the pot. Now, I'm so curious, this cheese crisp is done so well, right? You can hear it. Why did you choose to incorporate such a sort of fancy technique? I like crispy cheese and I like enchiladas, and it's just like, why not? <laughs> JJ, there's so much soul in the flavor of that enchilada sauce. It's so deep. That is delicious. And it's the perfect accompaniment to those really rich cheeses that you chose. I think you knocked it out of the park. Thank Good you. job. Woo! Great job, JJ. Oh, Three great dishes. Totally different cheeses. Yes. Totally different approach. Yeah, absolutely. But all three dishes highlighted cheese as the star, right? Exactly. Mm. 
Three amazing dishes truly out of this world. But there can only be one winner tonight. And the home cook with the best dish, the one who's going to be rocketed straight to the top of the competition, that home cook is... Congratulations. Caitlin. Can you three go and stand behind the front station and could everybody else come down and join them, please? Let's go. Caitlin, that was an incredible dish. Well done. You will, of course, get a huge advantage for winning that challenge tonight. But first, let us show everybody, including you, exactly what tonight's next challenge is. Gentlemen. Mystery Box Challenge began with a trip to outer space. But for this next challenge, it's time to come back down to Earth. Oh, or should I say, Lord. splash down into the ocean. Yes! Oh. Yay! Yes, they have, yes. They have salmon! Yes, mackerel! Yes, 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 yes. Holy mackerel, that's a lot of fish. There's halibut! Welcome to the MasterChef Fish Market. You have halibut, bronzino, Thai snapper, yellowtail, Wild salmon, sea bass, and ruby snapper. Now, in this challenge, you'll all have to make us a stunning, delicious fish dish, featuring one of these incredible fish. Who's worried about filleting those fish alone? Me, ma'am. Me, chef? Well, you don't have to be. <gasps> we don't have to be? Wait, what? Do we get our own chef? Who wants to see me fillet a fish real quick? I got the best fish of all time. Who wants to see me fillet a real fish? Yeah. Yay! The fish I have eats those little guys for breakfast. Let me show you a real one. Give me a sec. Graham says he has an even bigger fish. What could be bigger than these huge fish? Oh, no, I'm scared! Oh, my God! Who wants to see me fillet fish real quick? I got the best fish of all time. The fish I have eats those little guys for breakfast. Let me show you a real one. Give me a sec. Graham says he has an even bigger fish. What could be bigger than these huge fish? Oh my gosh. Is Graham like gonna come back with a giant dragon fish? Oh no, I'm scared! Oh my god! That is what I call a real fish. Oh, my God. Is that a piranha? Now, this is a moonfish. That looks like Jaws. Weighs about 115 pounds. Whoa. Who wants to see me fillet this thing? Woo! <laughs> All right, let's do this. I'm really happy that Graham, my favorite chef in the world, is going to show us how to fillet a fish. This is like the best day ever. This guy's got a giant bone plate here to control his organs. So I'm going to cut just like this. Once you're through that part, take it up here at the top. Get as close to the bone as you can. Go over that spine. That's going to try to leave as much meat as possible for us to take off. Let the knife do the work. Pull up gently so as not to tear the filet. Even though you guys are not going to be filleting a fish this big, this is pretty much the exact same technique you're going to do with other fish. Next, we're going to split this loin into two, following the seam of the filet. Get your knife at an angle. This is taking off the skin. Now, cut through. Pull your fingers back. See? Oh, beautiful. There's a filet. There we go. You're looking at close to 120 portions out of this giant fish. Whoa! Great? Exciting? Yes, yes, Chef! Thank you, guys. Let's do it. Watching Graham fillet that fish so precise, that was one of my favorite lessons. Maybe even more than science class. Caitlin, because you won the Mystery Box Challenge, you won't be cooking in this one. And you are through to the next stage of the competition. Woo! Yeah! Yeah, Katie! But there's more.
That's right, Caitlin. Tonight, you will be the Master Chef Fishmonger. The fish what? Monger. Monger. What's that? What's that? that? Person in charge of the fish. Caitlin, coming up. Oh, God. Those are some stylish boots, Caitlin. I've been to Seattle and I've been to the markets. So I know what fishmongers are, and I've seen them throwing fish from 20 feet away. Very professional. Love it. Caitlin, there's one other final advantage we're going to give you. You will get to save one young, talented home cook that will also not have to cook in tonight's elimination challenge. Who's that person going to be? The person I am choosing has great ideas and I would like to have on my side. This person is... Addison. Right, Addison, please head up to the balcony where Caitlin will join you shortly. It would have been great to be saved, but I can do this challenge. I can fly a fish. I'm ready for it. All right, Caitlin, it's time for you to hand out those fish. You guys will take turns to come up and tell Caitlin, our fishmonger, what kind of fish you want to cook with. Let's start with Avery. Please pick up a towel. Girl, what fish are you picking, Avery, please? Halibut. Ready? One, two, three. Well done, my darling. That's exactly how it works. Yeah. Right, next up, Jesse, please. Let's go. Can I have a mackerel, please? Swim. <laughs> oh, hey, good catch. <laughs> Nate, let's go. I would like a yellowtail, please. Yellowtail. Wow. Yellowtail. <laughs> nice. Good job. Look at you. That fish is bigger than Kaya. <laughs> next up, Vivian, please. Let's go. I'll get the tie snapper. Next up, Jason, please. Let's go. Can I please have the Thai snapper? Sam, please. Let's go. Can I get Thai snapper? <laughs> Mia, please. Oh, oh, and finally, Kaya, please. Let's go. Come on, Kaya. Salmon. Nice job, oh, Kaya. Filet of fish this tall and this big. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Amazing. Good girl. All right. Caitlin, now please head up and you're actually going to be enjoying a couple fish dishes that I made myself using that awesome moonfish. Go ahead and up. Woo, woo. Right, it's time to get this challenge started. Thank you. Now you know what's on the line. We will unfortunately be saying goodbye to some of you tonight. Is everyone ready? Yes! yes. yes. 60 minutes to create one incredible fish dish. Your time starts. Now. Come on, guys. 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 Okay, I removed the head. We know these kids are good enough to fill it their own fish. It's how they butch them, how they break them down, and what cut is it? Can't you be a nice little fish for one? So if you're not that familiar with filleting fish and butchering it, then there's a way of taking the skin off, scoring it, stuffing it with some fennel and lemon, and actually baking the fish whole. You've got totally. sufficient time tonight. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay, there we go. That's a way better cut. I am doing a pecan-crusted halibut with a sweet potato mash and sour sauce. This is my challenge. I go fishing every day in the bayou, so I am not going home back to Louisiana without that trophy. I am making a rustic ratatouille with the Thai snapper with a lemon and butter sauce. I'm really proud of myself for filleting the fish perfectly, and I'm just really hoping this is a good sign of what's to come. Today, I'm going to make a salmon confit with a daikon puree and a cucumber sunomono. And I want to incorporate some Asian flavors because that's where I'm from and that's where my strengths are. All right, guys, halfway there. 30 minutes gone, 30 minutes left. All right, 
Nate. Hi there. Tell me what you're cooking tonight. I am making a sesame yellowfin tuna steak with a green bean mushroom combination. So going down the Asian route with this thing, huh? Yes, sir. Beautiful. Back to Philly. I cooked a lot of Asian food. Have you ever traveled to Asia? Nope, never traveled to Asia. If you could travel anywhere, where would you go? Asia. <laughs> Good luck, Nate. Thank you. Justin, how are you doing? <sighs> I'm doing OK. You're using the Thai snapper? Yes. OK, tell me about the dish. How are you cooking it? I am making fish tacos with a lime sauce and a wow. coleslaw. Are you a big fan of tacos? Yes. <laughs> I love tacos. My food dream is to open a restaurant in my hometown, Philly, called Taco Palace. Wow. Mm. Good luck. Let's go. Just over 12 minutes to go. All right, Ian. What's the fish? Talk me through it. It's yolfin tuna. Oh, are your fish in the oven? No, I'm pan That's them. it right there? Ian hasn't even started his fish. You don't have a hot pan, though. You don't have anything ready to go. I mean, there's like just over 10 minutes to go. None of the fish have been seasoned. Pan's cold. Oh, my god. Oh, oh my god. I'm, I'm getting really nervous, Ian. That freaks me out. I mean, do you have a game plan? My sauce is all totally scared. This fish isn't cooked. Oh, my god. I cannot watch this. This can't be happening. Oh, are your fish in the oven? No, I'm pan them. That's it right there? Ian hasn't even started his fish. You don't have a hot pan, though. You don't have anything ready to go. I'm, I'm getting really nervous, Ian. That freaks me out. Fish isn't cooked? Oh, my god. I mean, do you have a game plan? Where's all your other stuff? This can't be happening. We got it. We'll figure it out. What's that for? That's going to be like a sauce. This is going to be mashed potatoes. Right. Let's get that on. If I were you, yeah, I'd get this. Get it hot? Yeah. Ian, I know that you're eight years old, but you got this. And I know that you're going to do yourself proud, us proud, and Indiana proud, all right? Keep your head in the game. Okay. Good luck. Ten minutes to go. Derek, how are you feeling? Great. Now, you're cooking with a dove of salt. That happens to be one of my favorite fish. Um, what are you serving with? With a papas bravas and a caper sauce. How far are you going in this competition? I think I'm going all the way. Top 10, top five? Winning it. Winning it. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. That's good. Last three minutes, guys. Let's go. Come on, guys, hurry up! Right, some amazing looking dishes, but there are some dishes that I'm slightly worried about. Yeah, absolutely. Kendall's oven roasted vegetables aren't looking roasted, and I think that Kendall's really going to suffer. Um, yeah. Vivian's um, look the suspect to me. A ratatouille with a Thai snapper. Don't get that no, at all. No, don't go together. you got to be kidding me. 60 seconds to go. Start plating, please. 10, Nine, 9, 8, eight seven, 7, 6, eight, five, 5, 4, four three, 3, 2, 1, and stop, guys. Hands in the air. Woo, yeah. Good job, guys. Well done. Great job. First up, the girl from Louisiana. Avery, please, thank you. I'm feeling great about my dish because my dish looks really good. I tasted everything. My fish is cooked perfectly. I think I got this in the bag, yo. Wow, wow, wow. Avery, first of all, that looks beautiful. Describe the dish, please. This is a pecan crusted halibut with a sweet potato mash and sour sauce. Wow. Why halibut? My daddy likes it. Pecan. Why pecans? Because my daddy likes them. <laughs> He's quite a hero, right? He's a good fisherman, yes? Yes, chef. Right, gotcha. OK, what did you season the mash with? It's just brown sugar. Right. Butter. And then a little bit of salt. Mm. Wow. Fish is cooked beautifully. Look, you can just see how it's still shiny and glistening. Love the pecan crust on the outside. Seasoned beautifully. But the mash and the acidity in that sauce absolutely lifts and combines all those flavors beautifully. Do you think you got what it takes to become America's next master chef, Junior? Yes, I do, chef. Amazing. Great job. Well done, chef. Thank you. Thank you, chef. Woo yes! I am so excited. I mean, he called me chef. Watch out. Avery Hurricane's driving on through straight to that trophy. <laughs> All right, next up, 
Jacelyn. Good luck, Ron, Jacelyn. All right, Miss Jacelyn, what did you make for us? I made fish tacos with lime sauce and lime coleslaw. All right. Why did you decide to make fish tacos? Do you eat a lot of fish tacos at home in Philly? Well, I don't really like fish, but I like tacos, so I thought if I do fish on a taco, maybe I'd like it better. That's a good point. Did you get a chance to taste any of that fish, just gauge how it was going to work in there? No, I did not. Let's give it a taste. So, corn tortillas, they've been fried in the pan there. Yes. Thai red snapper. I love tacos, so hopefully it's good. So, the fish is definitely... Miss Jacelyn, did you get a chance to taste any of that fish to sort of gauge how it was going to work in there? No, I did not. Let's give it a taste. So, the fish is definitely bland, which is a bummer. I have to tell you, the concept of a fish taco, I applaud. I think your aioli is delicious, but because the fish is so bland, you really need a lot more of the other things to sort of help lift it up. Yes. And for me, you know, the beauty of a fish taco is that the fish is always the star. Yeah, I like when people like tell me my mistakes so I can redo it and practice it. That's right. Thank you, Jacelyn. You're very welcome. I'm feeling very disappointed in myself because I thought I did really good, but I am crossing my fingers, arms, legs, toes, and eyes that I'm not going to him tonight. All right, next up, please, Derek. Woo. Woo. Derek, 11 years old, Pennsylvania, right? Yep. Explain the dish to me like I was at your restaurant. It is a Dover sole over roasted fingerling potatoes and sunchokes with a smoked paprika aioli. The idea is incorporated all the palate, the sweetness, the smokiness, and all sorts of flavors going. Wow, that's an expensive fish that you see on a menu. So, I mean, do you have like a refined palate, like fine dining kind of guy? I do have a refined palate. All right. So here's the thing, there's really only three things on the plate. What's amazing, though, is that it tastes like there could be 100 things on the plate because they are so absolutely perfectly done. I think your palate is arguably one of the best in the kitchen right now because they are all seasoned perfection. You're definitely one of the guys to watch. Good job, Eric. Great job, Eric. Good job, Eric. That is arguably one of the best things anyone has ever said about my food. It tastes okay. so good. I think I'm going to have the best dish of the night. <laughs> Next up from Arizona, Vivian, please. Thank you. Let's go. Right. Vivian, describe the dish, please. I made for you a Thai snapper over rustic ratatouille with a lemon sauce. What's in the ratatouille? Zucchini, eggplant, onion, tomatoes, and peppers. So, unfortunately, the fish is really soggy, so the skin is very, very chewy. But the big issue is you've got all this almost like a raw vegetable ratatouille that sort of tastes a little bit bitter. I love the lemon sauce, but unfortunately, it's not the kind of sauce that you serve with a fish. Oh. So, slightly disappointing. Thank you. Next up, Kaya. about the dish. Today we have a salmon confit with a daikon puree, a cucumber cinnamon, and crispy skin. I love that you chose to take down one of the biggest fish in the kitchen. <laughs> I like that you chose to confit the fish, which is a preparation that no one else in this kitchen used. I think that the flavors are fantastic. Very impressive dish. Thank you. Nice job, Kyle. Good job, Kaya. Good job. Thank you. Next up, please, Kendall. Explain 
the dish to me, please. Well, today I have for you brazino with rice, parsnip puree, and roasted vegetables. So some of the rice, some parsnip. Here's the thing. You cook fish, and you get the skin crispy, and you plate it upside down like that, it's going to get soggy. Little piece of skin, which is not going to taste very good. If you can see here, right, I got three vegetables. None of them are cooked. It's not going to have a lot of time to roast it all. There's a lot wrong with this plate. Thanks, Kim. You're welcome. Next up, Nate. Nate the Great. My dish looks stunning. I could not have been any more perfect with my dish. I think it tastes great, and I love it so much. I would probably marry it if I had the chance. All right, tell me about the dish. So this is a seared yellowfin tuna with a mushroom green bean combination and a cucumber noodle and tomato salad. Where did you learn this sort of Asian influence of cooking? Well, I'm not really Asian, but I love Asian food. And I do go to a lot of great Asian restaurants in Philly, and it's awesome. OK. Um, so it looks like all of the flavors and the ingredients and the preparation are sort of like harmonious in this Asian style of cookery. Nice flavor, very vibrant. Thank you. I gotta say, aside from just the size of plate it's on, this is the very best fish dish I've had in the Master Chef kitchen. Thank you. Nice job. Wow. Well done. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so happy Christina likes my dish. I'm not going home. I feel like Rocky right now. Thank you. All right, right, last up, the youngest male competitor, Ian. Let's go, young man. Come on, Ian. Well, oh, Ian, even though I struggled during this challenge, I'm very impressed with my dish, but I wish I had magic powers that I could actually see inside the fish and see if it's, like, if it's perfect. Wow. Describe the dish, please. So it is pan-seared yellowfin tuna over mashed potatoes, soy glaze sauce, and right. grilled asparagus. Right, mashed potatoes. Tell me there's some magic in there. What have you put in there? It's just regular mashed potatoes, salt, pepper. Um... What do you season it with? Wait, the fish or... Um... Mm, bit fish. Um, I forgot to season it. Um, I'm sorry about that, chef. What do you season it with? Wait, the fish? Um, mm, fish. Um, I forgot to season it. Um, I'm sorry about that, chef. Um. Uh, here's the thing. Tuna, it's actually delicious. You've got a sesame seed vinaigrette going on there. OK, thank you. Yes, sesame seed? Um, no, chef. No, there's no sesame seed all in there? Um, no, chef. There is definitely sesame seed in there. That, what that is, it's... Smell it, that. It, no, it's not sesame seed. What I put in it is just... um, sesame oil. That's what I said. <laughs> you said sesame seeds. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think sesame seed oil comes from? Um... Sesame Street. <laughs> sesame seeds! Um, fish cooked beautifully. Thank you. The sesame seed oil is delicious. Thank you. But it doesn't need the mash. Okay. Mash and asparagus is things like salmon. Yes. Not a tuna. Okay. Next time I see you serving mashed potatoes with yellowfin tuna, I'm going to hang you upside down <laughs> and stick your head inside a moonfish. <laughs> OK? Are we on the same page? Yes, Chef. Thank you. Good job, Ian. Even though Gordon Ramsay said that, mashed potatoes don't go well with tuna. I'm thinking that I'm like right in the middle that I'm not going home and I'm feeling pretty good. Okay. All right, everyone, there were some really amazing dishes out there tonight, but there was one dish in particular that we all agreed really stood out. The best dish of the night belonged to Nate. Congratulations. Good job. 
I have the best dish of the night. No way. I love myself right now. Hashtag best day ever. <laughs> right, unfortunately, here comes the tough part. You all know by now this is a strong competition. And sadly, tonight, we do have to say goodbye to two of you. The following three home cooks make their way down here, please. Vivian, please. Kindle. And finally, Jason. We are so proud of how all three of you did tonight. But sadly, not everyone can move forward. One of you will continue in the competition. Jason. Please. Go back to your station. Tonight, you are safe. Which means, Vivian and Kindle, unfortunately, your journey ends tonight in the MasterChef Junior competition. We are sorry to see you two go. Um, you came into this competition with a ambition and an admirable amount of strength in order to succeed. You have succeeded in our minds. Vivian, Kindle, well done. Thank you, and good night. I'm sad to go home, but I made so many friends here, and I'm one of the 20 best home cooks in America. I feel proud of myself and happy. Kendall, I just want you to know, girl, Kendall, we love you. I didn't win the trophy, but I'm going to go back to Philly and open up Kendall's Cakes and Sweets. I'm going to miss you so much. I'm really sad to be leaving the MasterChef kitchen this early, but I feel like I'm really proud of myself for getting this far. I'm only 11 years old in the fifth grade, but I've already cooked for Gordon Ramsay. I mean, how many people get to do that? Keep cooking! Bye, guys! Next time, the seven layers of dip building stop now! It's the first ever MasterChef Relay Race. No! MasterChef seems like your life depends on it! But it's the judges <laughs> yeah! who taste victory. I'm going to smash for it in And for the entree, a tricky elimination test oh. that stinks. Oh, my gosh. Oh my oh. Does anyone smell that? <laughs> One potato, two potato.